Hello there. My name is Ryan, I'm also known as LK404 on the forums, and I'm going to take you through an example game of Codex. To set up the game, each player places their board in front of them. Depending on what you get, you'll either have a smaller board with a separate patrol zone, or you'll have a large playmat that combines both of them. Both players start by placing their three heroes in their command zone. Your three heroes determine what cards are in your Codex binder. For instance, the player on the left is using Midori, Calamandra, and Argagarg, so her codex will contain two copies of all of the Balance, Feral, and Growth cards. Players then begin the game with a starting deck of 10 cards, and they set their base to 20 health. In this example, the red player is going first, but to understand the red player's turn, we're going to have to take a look at the turn phases. The red player's turn begins with the ready phase and the upkeep phase. During the ready phase, you normally ready any exhausted cards that you have in play, but since it's the red player's first turn, he doesn't have anything to ready. During the upkeep phase, you gain one gold for each worker that you have. Since the red player is going first, his starting worker card starts on the four worker side, and so he gains four gold during his upkeep. Now we get to move on to the main phase, and this is where you can play cards from your hand, summon heroes, hire workers, attack your opponents, and set up your defenses. The red player plays Madman from his hand, who is a one cost unit with one attack power and one health point. Gold costs are always listed in the upper left corner of the card, and attack and health values are always listed in the lower right corner of the card. Next, he pays 2 gold to play Jaina, a hero from his command zone, who arrives at level 1. At level 1, Jaina has 2 attack power and 3 health points. Units and heroes can't attack on the same turn that they arrive, so Jaina will have to wait until next turn to be able to attack. However, Madman has the haste ability, which will allow him to attack this turn. The red player exhausts Madman and attacks the green player's base. Because Madman has an attack value of 1, he deals 1 damage in combat, lowering the green player's base from 20 to 19. If the red player can reduce the green player's base to 0, he wins the game. Note that if the green player had had any units in her patrol zone, Madman would first have to attack the green player's patrollers. With one gold left, the red player hires a worker. Once per turn, you can pay one gold and any card out of your hand to hire an additional worker. Then he ends his main phase by moving Jaina into the patrol zone to defend himself from any future attacks. Next is the discard and draw phase. During this phase, players discard their entire hand and draw two more than the number of cards that they discarded, up to a maximum of five cards. And last is the tech phase, which actually takes place during your opponent's turn. While your opponent takes their turn, you look through your codex and choose two cards to add to your discard pile at the beginning of your next turn. Now it's the green player's turn. Because the green player went second, the green player's starting worker card starts on the five worker side, and so she gains five gold during her first upkeep. The green player starts her main phase by paying one gold and a card out of her hand to hire a worker. Next, she pays three gold to play Iron Bark Treant. Iron Bark Treant can't attack this turn, and so the green player places him into her patrol zone. She ends her main phase with one gold left over, which she decides to save for her next turn. During the discard and draw phase, she still has three cards remaining in her hand, and so she discards all three and draws five cards from the deck. The green player then passes the turn back to the red player, and begins looking through her codex to decide what card she'd like to tech on her next turn. During the green player's turn, the red player decided that he wanted to tech Firebat and Flame Arrow out of his codex, and so he removes one copy of each of those cards from his binder, and places them face down into his discard pile before taking his next turn. 
He readies his exhausted madman during his ready phase, then during his upkeep phase he gains 5 gold, 4 for each of his 4 starting workers, and 1 for the additional worker that he hired on his last turn. He starts his main phase by paying 1 gold to hire a worker, increasing his number of workers from 5 to 6. That allows him to meet the worker limit of his tech 1 building, which costs 1 gold and requires 6 workers to build. Once his tech 1 building is constructed, it will allow him to play tech 1 units, such as the firebat unit that he teched during his last tech phase. Because Jaina has been in play since the beginning of the turn, the red player can use her to attack. He exhausts Jaina to attack the green player's Iron Bark Treant. Because Iron Bark Treant is patrolling, its ability gives it an additional 2 armor and minus 2 attack, leaving it with 1 attack power, 2 health points, and 2 armor. Also, since Iron Bark Treant is in the squad leader patrol slot, it gains an additional 1 armor, giving it 3 armor in total. When one unit attacks another, they simultaneously deal their attack power and damage to each other, so Iron Bark Treant deals 1 damage to Jaina. Jaina deals 2 damage to Iron Bark Treant, but its armor absorbs the 2 damage dealt by Jaina. The red player then plays Scorch from his hand, which is a red spell. Spells can only be cast by an appropriate hero, so he uses his red hero to cast it. The Scorch spell deals 2 damage to a patroller, so the green player's Iron Bark Treant takes another 2 damage. This time, because Iron Bark Treant has only 1 armor remaining, only 1 of the 2 damage is absorbed by armor, and the Treant takes 1 damage. Finally, Madman attacks Iron Bark Treant. They both deal 1 damage to each other, which kills both units. The red player ends his main phase and discards his remaining 3 cards to draw 5. Since his draw pile is empty, he reshuffles his discard pile into his draw pile before drawing cards. The green player puts Centaur and Galena Glimmer from her codex into her discard pile. She gains 6 gold from her workers, in addition to her 1 remaining gold from last turn. She spends 1 gold to hire a worker, and then spends another gold to start building her tech 1 building. Then she spends 2 gold to summon Calamandra, who arrives at level 1. Next, she pays 2 gold for Young Treant, which draws a card when it arrives. Since the green player's draw pile is empty, she needs to reshuffle her discard to form a new deck to draw from. Then she pays 1 gold for Merfolk Prospector. The green player puts all of her units into the patrol zone. She places Calamandra into the squad leader spot, she places Merfolk Prospector into the scavenger slot, and she places Young Treant into the lookout slot. With three cards left, she discards her hand and draws five cards. There are two copies of every card in your codex binder, and so the red player texts two copies of Crash Bomber from his codex. He readies Jaina and gains 6 gold from his workers. Then he spends 1 gold to hire a worker. Next, he spends 1 gold to level up Jaina. Heroes can gain levels in one of two ways. You can either pay 1 gold per level on your turn to level up your hero, or you can gain 2 levels for free if you can kill an opposing hero. Next, Jaina casts the Flame Arrow spell. Flame Arrow is a fire spell, and so the red player's fire hero, Jaina, can cast it. Flame Arrow deals 4 damage to a unit or hero, and so the red player targets Kalamandra. Kalamandra has 1 armor from her patrol zone slot, but the 3 remaining damage is still enough to kill her. 
Whenever a hero dies, they're returned to the command zone face down, and that hero can't be summoned for a turn. Jaina gains two levels for killing a hero, which levels her up to level 4 and a new level band. Jaina gains the attack, health, and abilities of the new level band, and recovers any previous damage. Jaina can then use her new midband ability, which allows her to exhaust and deal 1 damage to a patrolling unit. Jaina exhausts and deals 1 damage to Merfolk Prospector, which is enough to kill it. Because Merfolk Prospector is in the scavenger slot, the green player gains 1 gold when Merfolk Prospector dies. The red player then discards 3 cards to draw 5. The green player adds Barkcoat Bear and Gigadon from her codex to her discard pile, which are both Feral Tech 2 units. Then the green player gains 7 gold and starts her main phase by making a worker. Next, she pays 4 gold to start construction on her Tech 2 building. While your Tech 1 building can produce any Tech 1 unit, you must choose one of your 3 specs when you build your Tech 2 building. The green player chooses Feral, so her Tech 2 building will only allow her to play Feral Tech 2 units. With her last 3 gold, she plays Centaur, a Tech 1 unit. She puts all of her units into the patrol zone, hoping to be able to play a Tech 2 unit on her next turn. Hopefully, this should get you up and running with playing Codex. For a more thorough explanation, I highly recommend the full rules tutorial video from Josh at Dark Goblin Gaming, and if you have any specific rules questions, you can tweet your rules questions at Codex Rules. Good luck and enjoy the game!